Hello, my darlings. It's Ant here with Ants Rants. So, on this week's rant, let me fucking talk about Cork. Cork in Ireland. It's a town, it's a city, it's a place. Down south, the sunny southeast of Ireland. It's the most southerly county in the country. The very, very bottom tip of Ireland is Cork, biggest county, all that motherfucking jazz. Um, the real republic, the rebel county, all of these things, it's a known form. Well, I'm born and raised and bred in Cork, and I can tell you it's fucking shite. So, I'm money back in Cork for my sins. I've literally lived in, so I'm from a little town, little country town, southeast, right, of Cork. Well, in the east of Cork, right? Fucking boring as hell, all right, growing up. So I always wanted to move, you know, to London or this, that, or the other, like, you know. So I kind of wanted to move to the city in Cork. So I did anyway in my early 20s. So in my early 20s, been there, done that, got the motherfucking t-shirt, literally. And and when I say literally, I was Miss Cork. And then I went to the uh, pageant the following year and I wore a t-shirt saying, Miss Cork, been there, seen it, got the t-shirt. The women that were um, in the uh, pageant apparently got a bit like antsy about it. And I was like, here's the fucking joke, like who cares? Sort of shite anyway. So yeah, from Cork and literally moved to the city and in my early 20s and now I'm back nearly 20 years later and nothing has fucking changed. I moved to, I was in London for a while. I was in Sydney for a while in Australia. Um, was in LA for a while and then Dublin on and off over my life and the last time I was in Dublin was like for the last like six years moved back during Covid and oh my fucking god nothing has fucking changed and I moved back because I have my own apartment so well I don't have to pay rent um Casa in point so this is my little office this was like a spare room I was renting out but you know when the tenant was moving back to France after during Covid I was like well should I get somebody in or should I not not to turn this little room into a little office slash meditation room slash little space. There's actually a really good vibe in here when you walk in. I've got loads of little crystals and stuff at the window. You can see over there just stuff around, still, you know, sprucing the place up a little bit. Any motherfucking who? Um, so yeah, so basically, yeah, and now I'm back in Cork and it fucking sucks. So I'm back in Cork because I got my own apartment, don't have to pay rent. COVID, uh, the near, the end wasn't, you know, in sight. Uh, and then the, it did end, so I was like, thank fuck. But then, like, you know, to move to Dublin or to move to London, move anywhere is going to be, like, really fucking expensive. And I'd blown through my savings, blown through my fucking money, self-employed, too fucking lazy to actually work, um, and doing stuff here in drips and drabs, like, you know, but kind of very little discipline and motivation. So then I decided to, like, you know, change career because I've always wanted to get into property. So then, therefore, last year in January or last year in November, I decided I was going to, like, get into property. Because in Ireland, it takes two motherfucking years to get your license here. Yes, yes. In Dubai, it takes a couple of weeks. Um, the States, and it takes, like, another couple of weeks. In the UK, you don't even need a license to work in property. But here, you, you do. And it, it takes two years. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Unless you go to college, of course, and it takes maybe, you know, four to six years. But... And that's probably for doing surveying and all that kind of thing. So I decided to do an apprenticeship. So I'm working in a really nice uh, uh, office in a really nice for a really nice company and a really great brand. So uh, that is fabulous. Um, but I'm still in Cork. This is the thing. Um, and so because it takes two years to do this apprenticeship and I've just started it, then I'm going to have to be here for two years to get my license. And then maybe go further afield, Dublin, London, whatever. But saying that, you know, probably would need to like, you know, kind of cut my teeth a little bit, like maybe a year in the company that I'm currently in. So therefore, I'll be there three years in total, which is like, you know, better than just like, you know, getting your license. Right. Bye. See you later. Do you know, uh, and it's a really good company. So like to stick within that brand, maybe just like go to their other office, possibly in Dublin or maybe London because they got offices all over the world. Anywhere you can imagine any city, they've got offices there. So it's like, hmm, that is fantastic. Doesn't necessarily mean that I would get a job in those offices, but it does help. That if I go from one brand to, or to stay within the brand, anyway. So my point is, is that I was going for lunch the other day and I went into this this hotel, literally around the corner. Because normally I actually, because like the fucking, this is how small Cork is. It's so small, it takes me five minutes to walk to work, do you know? Anyway, which is fucking great, like, you know, but I mean, that's the size of the city. It's like a couple of streets and that's it. 
seriously, you know, I mean, and getting, I don't know if it's deja vu or if it's just fucking, you know, I don't know what, like, you know, but everything is the same, everything, nothing changes, it's just the exact same as well as 20 motherfucking years ago. Anyway, um, so, uh, and I mean, like, you're getting, like, a little bit of, um, you get bits of nostalgia every now and again, like, I was working in a shop downstairs when I was 15, it was a really cool shop, you know, and got a bit of nostalgia walking past the other day, and I was well gone, like, but the unit is still there, uh, you know, that's kind of nice, like, you know, but are you fucking, but really, like, you know, I mean, am I going to stay in the city just for nostalgia? I mean, it's not that fucking addictive. But anyway, um, went into this restaurant, or into this, like, hotel that's got a restaurant, and it's, like, literally supposed to be, like, a four-star, if not a five-star. Now, a five-star generally is if it has a concierge service. So, you know, it's got, like, you know, car parking outside, you know, maybe valet parking. It's got, like, concierge, you know, bellboy at the door. It does have that, so I don't know if it is a five-star. But okay, I get it, and like I goes, uh, you know, I just wanted to get like a little bit of cheap lunch, like you know, and I was going to just get like a soup or something, but then I opted like for the toasted sandwich. So I said I get that because I'd say, you know, in that place it's supposed to be a really nice restaurant. So I got the toasted sandwich, you know, and usually that would be like really, you know, to get a good one, you know, really good ingredients, nice and chunky, uh, beautifully done. What I got, like, which if <laughs> you're going to see right here, oh my god, look at this! What the hell is that? It's literally like a piece of white bread, two pieces of white bread with cheese in the middle and then cheese on top with a piece of bacon shoved in. Like it looked ridiculous. I actually said it to them because I was like, I'm sorry, like, you know, that does, that just does not cut it for me. I mean, I think the chef was French. So whatever the hell that is, like you just, oh, put cheese in it. It'd be great. I mean, to be fair, this place, right? When I was in there, like I was probably the only young person in there. I'm not even that young. You know, I actually am. Um all it's all were all these old biddies up from the country for the day to have their tea and scones are going to i mean i went in to one of the kind of areas like where it's sort of like a little tea room and i i swear like i mean it was like walking to an old folks home it was like i even felt bad when i sat down and i thought about what i just saw because i saw this old man that was like so gaunt and he had his walking stick and he was bent over and he was like trying to wave at your one to give her money and I was like I actually kind of just walked right past him at the time but then like I was kind of going to feel kind of bad he's probably going to die anytime soon uh, like what the hell so basically the reason I'm ranting about this is because like in Cork there used to be a scene Cork going back in like say the 90s now it was a little bit before my time unfortunately so I didn't really get to grasp it but I got like the tail end of it and it was fucking wicked like but I just know that like I was kind of I was around like as a teenager um I was a bit too young to kind of appreciate it, but I was kind of like as a teenager, once or twice, like went to the cool places, like when I was like 14 or 15, went to like this place called the Bodega that was, that's still there, but it's completely changed, it's fucking awful. The guy that bought it, like, I'm not going to mention names, like, but he did a fucking terrible job, like, it was big and bright and spacious and open and light and airy and cool, and now it's like fucking, they've put all these fake columns in there, turned it into a whiskey bar, and it's just like fucking dark and dingy and dank and small, it's like, fucking why would you ruin this beautiful building? That was a cool spot. The Yummy Yucky Club, which used to be in an art gallery called the Triscoll, that was a cool little spot, was there once or twice to do, like, sushi and stuff, um... It was like this nightclub that was like the longest running nightclub in the whole of Europe and one of the most famous nightclubs in the whole of Europe. Even Kirk Cobain played there, believe it or not, uh, called Sir Henry's. Um, that's now demolished and gone, but I was there a few times, but I was kind of, again, at the tail end of it. Like, and I was really young, so I didn't really get it at the time, but it was a scene. There was like so many different cool bands. There was like all these things happening. I mean, even though I wasn't kind of in the midst of it and I was kind of too young to really grasp it, I kind of saw it here and there. Uh, and it was really cool and really fun. Um, and I'm just, I, and I knew about it, but like now looking back, it's like, there's now nothing. At the time I was kind of like growing up and I was thinking this is what it's going to be like, you know, when you get older and it's going to be great and you know, it's fucking, it's going to be a blast. And then you get older and it's like, all that shit is gone. All the cool stuff is gone. All the fucking fun is gone. Places have shut down or got demolished or they've changed. Uh, like there's no more fucking fun, you know what I mean? It's like, it's the exact same bars are open as they were 20 years ago and they're fucking, you know, they haven't changed at all and there's nothing going on really, like, there's no fucking scene. So basically, like, you know, I mean, I was having this little sort of debate on, on comments in uh, YouTube. People were talking about, like, uh, there was like, this video that about, like, how Ireland is wealthy and then, like, you know, someone made a comment going, like, oh, I I'm from Ireland, I never knew it was perceived as wealthy. And I kind of put it in the comments, Ireland has always been wealthy, which it was and it is. But what I'm talking about is, like, you know, it's got, like... It's got, it's got inherent wealth, 
which is like you know wealth in the soil ireland can be can be a completely rich sustainable country in the sense of like that that's, we've got the richest soil you know we've got like the best healthiest grass fed cows we've got the healthiest best fed animals across the board we have a sea absolutely abundant in a multiplicity of fish and all sorts and we really are a self-sustaining country but you know badly run uh, so the government basically exports all of our good stuff uh, the soil is probably destroyed with pesticides uh, yes there are like still grass-fed cows because it's kind of all coming back now to like you know health and less pesticides and chemicals and things like that um, you know you do get like organic veg and you get like a lot there's a lot of like sort of uh, vegan and craft I don't know what, what would you call them like health shops I guess like that sell kind of organic veg boxes and stuff like that so all of that like is kind of there but at the end of the day like you know okay this is something that kind of annoys me as well the fucking famine there was no famine in Ireland in 1865 or 1845 actually it was a genocide literally Ireland had all of the fucking all of its own things and this is what it was doing it was it had the highest population that it's had it's we, we still are not at the same population in 2023 that it was back in 1845 there was eight million people over eight million people living in Ireland in 1845 because it, there was a, a, an abundance of um food do you know there was an abundance there was a, a high quality of living because they you had um trees for fuel you had uh soil for veg you had the the grass for animals and you had the sea all around for fish so you didn't have to do go or you know all you had to do is work in the farm so if Ireland was left alone to its own devices it would it would have been such a a beautiful culture but unfortunately the English were like we want that and so they came in and fucking pillaged raped and fucking shot and murdered and killed all the Irish and insisted that all the food be sent to the UK. And that's what fucking happened. So England were eating all of Ireland's food, killing people that like tried to keep the food for themselves and therefore drove the country and declared it a famine, which is embarrassing because everybody thinks there was a famine in Ireland because of the potato blight. Uh, England planted that potato blight. They made all the, they drew, you know, and like, they, they made slaves out of the people of Ireland as well. They were like, okay, well, we'll give you some food if you um, work for us. So they had them building these roads that led to nowhere, walls for no reason. People were dying of starvation in the middle of this work, do you know? And it was literally because they were just stealing and robbing and pillaging and raping and murdering. There you go. So Ireland has always been a rich country. So this is kind of a little debate I had back and forth in the comments like there on, on YouTube. Um, and it is kind of frustrating, you know. But this is, again, it was just like, it's, so it's always been a rich country, but it's very poorly ran. So literally, what bugs me is like that this country, I mean, I'm living in this country now. And it could be great, grand, beautiful, all that. It's got some great uh, scenery. But all of the fucking towns and cities in Ireland are absolute kips. Cork City is a kip derelict buildings everywhere no fucking police on the street um no fucking vibe no scene nothing fucking happening uh the one cool thing which is like this like open market that we have they were on about shutting that down uh you know no kind of really cool late night clubs they don't bring any like you know good djs here anymore um and then you go to dublin like and apparently there's no like garda presence police presence in dublin either like so you've got like tourists coming off the fucking train going to james street which is where the guinness factory is because you want to you know do the touristy thing and you got like gangs beating each other up on the street like and fucking it goes on and again like dublin's a kip as well like you know i mean when we had one month there this summer of like complete sun uh, and no rain you could see the filth on the streets like, they don't even, like, fucking, like, I mean, the council, the local councils, the taxpayers, where the fuck is their money going? Like, I want fucking receipts. Because literally, like, you know, when the when it doesn't rain, you're looking at the street and you're going, oh, my God, this looks so bad for tourists. It's even just so bad for, for me as a fucking civilian, you know, wandering around and walking wherever, you know, walking to work or walking around. It's just disgusting, like, to see, like, just splash stains on the streets, you know. You just need, like, proper 
you know, it just there just needs to be like literally proper placement of people to keep the country looking fucking good. You go to any of the towns in all the small, uh, like when you're, if you're say driving Cork to Dublin or whatever, you can go the motorway or you can go through all the different towns on the way up. Now I haven't done that in a very long time. I just spend my time in Cork and Dublin and the odd time Kerry, you know, might go to Clarny, that's about it. Uh, but I don't really go anywhere else, maybe Dingle. But I must say, like literally all those fucking tiny towns, they're awful kips. You know, and I mean, yeah, I know that like everyone's in Dublin because all the multinationals are in Dublin and they want to be working in Facebook or Apple or Google or this or that or the fucking other, do you know? So therefore they've all left the the, the local towns and the local villages to kind of work, find work further afield because they don't want to work in the local butcher or baker or candlestick maker. They want to work like, you know, in somewhere that's fucking cool and funky and have a good life and all that. Perfect. Why not like, you know, get a multinational and plant it in Limerick? planted in Abbey Leaks, I don't know, wherever the hell, um, do you know, because it's all in Cork and Dublin, like right next door to me is the, um, is, is Apple, do you know, so in my particular apartment building, there's loads of people that actually work in Apple, uh, which is fine, but I've had this building, or had this apartment since it's been built back in 2005, but yeah, so look, at the end of the day, I think this is my rant is nearly coming to an end, but yeah, I'm so fucking sick of like this country being, and I mean tax as well. I'm on an apprenticeship. I'm doing an apprenticeship now at the moment, so I'm not on a, a huge amount of money right now because I'm t- I'm changing careers and I am like in college one day a week and then working um, the other four days in order to get my license. Just the way it is, and I'm being taxed on what fucking little money I get, and I'm like, Are you fucking joking me? Like I thought that like there should be some sort of like threshold, you know, um. Like, no matter how, I mean, to, if you want to earn five grand a month, you have to be on a hundred, you know? I mean, and, and yet, like, fucking, the streets are filthy. There's no guard of presence. It's like, and there's, there's no scene. There's nothing fucking cool happening, you know? It's just like, what the motherfuck? Anyway, I want you to let me know what you think down below in the comments. And I want you all, oh, and I want you all to like, subscribe, and hit that motherfucking bell notification so that you know when I'm ranting. So that's it for me, folks. That's it for me today. Ciao for now.